It's your daily dose of Donna. Welcome to the show. Today is Tuesday, November 7th, and uh, the saga continues. We have a lot to talk about today, and I have an insanely awesome guest for you guys to listen to. Teddy Mellencamp is a guest on Daily Dose today, and I really, really need you guys to do me a solid today. And I want you to listen with an open mind and an open heart, because Teddy is honestly one of the most polarizing housewives or former housewives there is, I feel like. She really, really triggers people in a good and bad way. And she was very, very around BravoCon this weekend. I have a past with Teddy, a friendship with Teddy that lasts basically all of my kids' life. So I want you guys to hear this and um, let me know in the comments. But before we get into it, we have to talk about a couple things that have just come up. Number one, thank you so much for joining the Facebook group. And of course, if you join my Patreon tomorrow, I'll release really behind the behind the scenes of of the BravoCon experience and so many little other things that have happened. Um, Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Mean. You guys love this tool. And that is why I keep talking about it because not only do you guys love it, I love it. I use it all the time. I get complimented all the time on my skin. I really do believe that this tool has helped tremendously. So the Blue Mean Face Pro, I I guess I should do some like, uh, you know, voice lessons. La 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 la. (laughs) The Blue Mean Face Pro is, it's just this tool that, okay, I'm going to turn it on. All right. And you have three settings. I've talked about this before. You have the green, you have the red and the blue. I like a red light because I've seen so many housewives use those red lights. The red light therapy makes you look younger. It it increases your, um, you know, or it decreases your puffiness. It makes you tighter. It makes you, if you have serums or any oils in your skin and you want it to go in and um, penetrate, it does that. It tones your jawline. It reduces your double chin, which I just needed to sit here for like an hour. But this is the coolest thing about it. When you put it on your skin, it does vibrate. Oh, I changed the setting. Let me go back to red. It does vibrate. And if you go like this for a long time, for like three minutes, you'll notice a big difference in puffiness on one side of the face. And you only have to do it three times a week, but I like to do it when I'm watching my shows at night when I'm watching my programs. Okay, you guys, so I have an offer. It's $70 off for the first 100 people that purchase it. It's normally 150 but with my link, you're going to get $70 off. If you don't like it, you will be able to get your money back after, you know, their, their uh, time period that they have. And my link is bluemean.com slash daily dose Donna. That's D-A-N-A. So thank you, Blue Mean, for sponsoring this episode. And as I, you know, buzz along here, we do have to talk about uh, what Jeff Lewis dropped this morning. So you guys, Jeff Lewis is in hot water left and right, right? We, we know this about Jeff. We've known this for a long time. I told you on yesterday's episode that I get a lot of crap for being a Jeff apologist. I don't think I'm an apologist. I just think I know him for being a jerk. Like he says what he says and he says what's on his mind. But I also really do believe this is who he is. Now, And I know that a lot of you guys are also saying like, but that shouldn't give him an excuse. And you're right. Certain times he does cut below the belt. And I need you guys to listen to today's episode with Teddy because we talk about Jeff Lewis and her reaction to what Jeff said about her and all in over at BravoCon this weekend. But Jeff Lewis is someone who, in my opinion, um, goes too far many times, right? We've seen him go too far with various people. And a lot of times, the one thing that I think he can do for the most part is recognize that. I think self-awareness is really important in this journey and being able to apologize. Yes, I know that he does do a lot of things and then has to go on this apology tour. But I do believe, I do believe that there is something to to be said about someone that can take accountability and apologize for something that they, they've done wrong, for being mean or whatever. So... Um, Jeff yesterday got a lot of heat. He went on his show and he talked about the weekend and he talked about BravoCon. And one of the things that he did mention was Stu, Chef Stu, who is currently an ex-boyfriend. It was the on again, off again boyfriend love affair for over a year. Um, and you know, they definitely had a very tumultuous relationship, but we did get a feeling that they were over last week. And Jeff had mentioned a couple of times that they were on, you know, that he felt betrayed by Stu. So 
my assumption was that Stu cheated, but he could have lied about anything and that could have been a betrayal. Um, yesterday's episode, he did talk about Stu going to BravoCon instead of going home when his mom was either had just died or was dying. So his mom lived in Ireland and Stu's mom passed away, unfortunately, last week. And this was not cool for a lot of people um, that were listening in terms of Jeff revealing this information. It felt really too below the belt. It felt like it wasn't his story to tell. And I agree with that. And Jeff has his own issues, which he um, describes why he did that and why it really affected him. So today on his, on Jeff Lewis, on his 9 a.m., you know, serious radio show, he had Ronnie and Ben from Watch What Crappens on his show. And they talked about it. And Jeff said, you know, I got a lot of heat yesterday. And I really want you to know, um, I am sorry for sharing the news about the death, about his, about his mother's death. That was not my story to tell. And I really do apologize. I thought it was more out in the open. I don't follow him on Instagram. And I didn't know that he hadn't told the world because I was getting DMs from listeners and other people in, that work here and stuff knew about it. So I thought it was more open. I, I'm sorry for sharing that news, but I'm not sorry about sharing my feelings about why he went to BravoCon and not home to his mom's. He's very upset about it. I think he said multiple times in the show today that he felt, you know, disgusted by the behavior. He, it's not something that he agreed with. He thinks like, why, what kind of person are you to go to BravoCon and not home, you know, whatever, but that's Jeff's issues to judge if he wants to. Stu and anyone that goes through grief, grief goes through it in their own way. Um, my grandma died and I did a show that day that being said, that wasn't my mom. And, you know, it, I don't know what the relationship is, but then they, in the after show, they had a big conversation about the way people feel about family. You know, Jeff was like, no matter what, if, if, you know, they're, they've given birth to me and have raised me, I'm going to do anything in my power to be there for them in their last moments. And Zach Noe Towers, who is one of the guests of, or one of the hosts of the after show said, I don't feel the same way. You know, it's, it's very interesting dynamics. This is a really triggering conversation because a lot of people have relationships with their moms that are messed up. Look at the Monica and her mom on Salt Lake City. Like that storyline is so triggering for people that are watching. So whenever there's like a mom story and then of course the ex-boyfriend, it's like, it's a little tricky. But today, in today's episode, Jeff, or after show, Jeff did finally admit to the fact that he was cheated on by Stu. Um, he thought he had gotten an STD. This was like, whoa. Um, that That's why he did that big STD panel, which is why I thought it was a cheating situation because he mentioned that. And then he said it was a legal issue and he can't get into it anymore. Um, so people are starting to assume like, was it an employee? Was it someone that worked with them? You know, who knows? I, I don't know. And I, frankly, it doesn't, it doesn't, matter to us, you know, as viewers or as listeners, we're just fans of these people. And so we'll talk about it because this has been obviously like in the middle of interviewing Teddy, I got 20 DMs saying, Oh my God, it's official Stu cheated. So obviously you guys are very interested in this. And you know, it's a story that we were, we were touching on yesterday. Jeff did also, um, say that he is sad. You know, he really loved Stu. He really wanted it to work with Stu. And um, he's not going to just like jump and start to date someone else. He's done that before. He's moved on. But Jeff right now is, I think, in a period of like, I don't want to call it rock bottom, but I think it's a little bit of like a come to Jesus moment in those in that way, because he's lost so many friends in the last few weeks. And when that happens, um, I think you start to question like, is it me? Is it them? What am I bringing to my life? Here's my suggestion or my um, interpretation of why Jeff has so much drama with friends and I could be wrong. I think that Jeff probably seeks out people that are really, um, that aren't boring, flat, like, like devoid of personality people. I think Jeff tends to be attracted to interesting, funny, dynamic, strong personalities. And with that sometimes comes a little bit of controversy, right? Comes a little bit of strong opinions. And even Jeff said today, like, you can't be a polarizing or a strong opinioned person in the public without getting a ton of heat. And you're never going to get everyone to like you. I've seen it in my own little way. And I talk about this a lot with Teddy today. The bigger you are, the more in public you are, the more people will not like you. 
and the more people will obsess over you. And this is just kind of part of the game. And I've always just tried to figure this out as it goes, because I'm still super sensitive about certain things. So as you grow, you realize that you're going to piss people off. But if Jeff went to BravoCon, or if Jeff went on his show every single day and just reported the news or just talked about his life in a very like, then I went to coffee, then I had a drink, then I went to bed, we would not listen. We are attracted to the dumpster fire of life, right? This is who we are. And even Rick and Kelly. So Rick and Kelly Dodd, which I know is another person that is very, very upsetting to a lot of people, but they had a show today where they talked about it because they're getting themselves involved in the earring gate too of the Heather McDonald and everything. And Kelly was saying, you know, I feel really bad for Jeff in this case too, because he is being really like, he's getting you know, a lot of drama with a lot of his friends. And it's really, really hard. I don't necessarily feel bad for any of these people. Just like I don't really feel bad for me because I'm choosing to talk about it. Right. And, and if you are also a public figure or you're a podcaster and you're talking about it, it's like, you kind of have to expect that if you're going to talk about it, people are going to have opinions about it. Right. So like, I'm trying to very much take accountability or responsibility for talking about these things and recognize that things will come in that I don't like. Like you think yesterday's show talking about earring gate with Heather McDonald and Jeff Lewis, you know, went over so smoothly in the comments. Uh, uh, I got called a lot of names, but it's just the name of the game. Right. And people feel very strongly about this. People feel very strongly about these people and these, these podcasters or radio hosts that they really love. And you know, just like they feel really strongly about housewives that they watch, which is why Teddy gets, you know, really severe hate. Like I've seen some really horrible things that have been written about her. And I really wanted her on my show today because coming off of BravoCon, I got to see her. We got to hug. I got to hang out with her and her husband. And there's a side of Teddy that I don't know if you guys know. I don't know if you guys see it because when you see her on her show, she is, or on Real Housewives, she was the Teddy from a reality show. And then when you see her on two teas in a pod, I think you see like a more investigative, you know, trying to get the juice out of these people person. And I just really wanted her to be just Teddy and talk to us about, you know, what her experience is this and how does she handle all of the, the ups and downs. So I hope you guys enjoy the episode with Teddy. Please let me know in the comments, be kind. That's all I'm going to ask. And, um, and that's it. Thank you so much for being here. And I will be back tomorrow with, I'm sure, a ton more gossip and fun stuff to talk about. Um, I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. Teddy, Teddy Mellencamp from Two Teas in a Pod. Welcome to Daily Dose of Donna. Hi, Donna Dana. How's it going? <laughs> Donna Dana. That's a good one. I should change my name officially to Donna Dana. Teddy, I am so happy to finally have you. I got to see you in person over the weekend in Vegas, you looked beyond and it was right before this big watch what happens live appearance, which we'll get into. Did you have the craziest weekend? We had such a crazy weekend. I mean, it started really on Thursday. Well, even Wednesday, we recorded so many episodes before we even went in. And then Thursday we came in and there's always that moment before you have like a big work event where you're like, is anyone going to come? Yeah. Like, because especially in the world of housewives, everybody's like, yeah, I'm coming. But then nobody actually like clicks a button to say RSVP and like gives their information. And I'm sitting there with Tamara and the event started at seven o'clock. It's like 702. We're like, shit, no one's here yet. You know, meanwhile, then it gets to the point where we're at capacity, security's coming in. We have over 40 housewives there. So, I mean, it was intense. And everybody, I think, gets the most drunk night one because 100%. there's no watch what happens live. And it's like you kind of blow your load night one. So that's, that's kind what of she said. And you <laughs> and you get and you're like excited. You're excited because you just get to Vegas. You're not hungover and you're so excited to see everyone. And I'm sure for you guys it was probably such a rush. So you're talking about that you had like this welcome party, right? The first night. <laughs> 
Yeah, so iHeart had a suite at the same hotel where everybody was staying, which I I tell everybody, I'm like, listen, if you don't get in a ticket to BravoCon within the first three, 33 seconds, just do your research and figure out where they're putting everybody to stay and stay in that hotel bar and you'll find everybody that you need. It's, I saw all the Bravo Lebs within two hours of having drinks there. <laughs> right. It was the craziest thing. You could only order two things to eat. It was either the rigatoni or like, <laughs> I think the tuna tartare in that one area, but where every single person was there. It was crazy. It was almost like there were more Bravo Lebs than not. And everywhere you looked, I mean, I peed with you. I peed with the Grand Dame. Like I was, <laughs> I was in the bathroom with Jen Fessler a few times. Like it was the craziest experience. Yeah. You it didn't was even so need fun. to be in the bar. You could just be in the restroom because there's one All of the girls. restroom. Yeah, totally. So, okay, so I heart through that party, that like opening night party for you guys, um, because Two Teas in a Pod is insanely successful. You guys are killing it. You're always at the top of the charts. And this weekend, how many episodes did you release? We released, I, I mean, over 20. I mean, I think we did 11 night one and then day two was something like eight. And then we've dropped three more and then we dropped two, we're dropping two more today. So it's just, it was kind of intense, but it, it was a different experience for us because last year I was in the press room doing yeah. them. So mm -hmm. they were really short. So it was easy. Bam, bam, bam. This one, some housewives had some complaints because we, I'm a former housewife and Tamara is a housewife that they didn't want us necessarily to conduct interviews in the press room. So that's why iHeart got us a suite but we ended up getting longer, better interviews. So even though at yeah. first I was like, this is annoying, we're not gonna be able to get as much, we actually got more and had more time with everybody. And so your suite was in the hotel that all the housewives were staying. Yes. So it was easy for them to come on in. And who does your scheduling? You have someone that like works with all the housewives people and kind of coordinated everything, right? Yeah. I mean, a lot was just, I mean, some were scheduled. Um, so there's, you know, iHeart has a huge podcast division clearly, but so we were there with four different producers. We had our photographers, our party, pan like everybody was there. Um, Tamara DM people, I DM people, our producers DM people, but like we really didn't know who was coming. Like there was three actually confirmed times that weren't even at the time we needed because housewives would come in and they weren't speaking to the rest of their cast. So they'd like come in and they'd be like, we want to do an interview, oh. but I can't see so-and-so. So we'd have to like <laughs> take them back to the room do that, switch the times around. But I mean, it's kind of more fun that way. And it's less, you know, it's less like you're looking at your rundown, making sure you hit all your beats. Like you're just going off of your true emotion. And there was people that I loved that I never would have thought. I, I always was kind of like, oh, you watch the show. It always happens that way. You watch I'm interested the show. actually. I, I'm going to ask curious who like surprised you the most that of the Bravo Lebs that you met this weekend in terms of like, you weren't really a fan of and then you were obsessed with by the end well i mean i th the two that i feel like i would probably be the closest with outside of my actual friend group are, are pretty you'd be like okay i i look at it it makes sense but like i loved aaron from new york i'm so obsessed with her I love like her. loved girl crush mm -hmm. um we have the same birthday like you could just mm. uh, similar shit stirring personality i <laughs> <laughs> loved her. I also loved Robin. I thought she was really open oh, wow. and authentic. And I think that once, and you guys should listen to that interview because once you actually hear it, it all makes so much more sense. And that like Patreon gate goes away Okay. because what woman in their right mind is going to out their husband and their best friend about something that happened five months prior to filming if I somebody doesn't bring it up? I mean, it, it's something it would you would only bring it up if you were dying for a storyline and you needed something and you didn't have anything else. But she was not in that position. She didn't want to throw her husband under the bus. And then I asked, I said, well, you said you thought Karen would bring it up. And she goes, yeah, I did think Karen was going to bring it up. But um, we have so much on Karen. She doesn't necessarily bring things up in the moment. And I was like, Burr. oh, my God.
Mm -hmm. I loved Karen though. When I met her in the bathroom, we chatted for so long. She's so cute. Like that's the coolest thing about seeing these people. And number one, why are you guys all so freaking tiny? And I hate to be like body talking about bodies, but you guys are not even just like, it's not about skinny. Everyone's just smaller in real life. Do you feel that way too? Well, everybody that I see always is like, oh, we thought you were going to be tall. I'm yeah. like, what gave you that impression? I am... I mean, my license is a lie. It says I'm five five, but I'm. I feel like we're the same height. So are we five three I and see. a half? I'm five. Oh, so I'm towering over you. You were you were <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal next to me. Wait, but Teddy, you like? I mean, it's so true because even when I met Tamra, I mean, she and I are very small together next to each other in the picture. Of course, Joey Gorga and I were pretty much the same height, but that's okay. Um, no, I mean, everyone is just so. I think it's because of your personalities on TV are just so big that when you're watching it as a viewer, you just assume that people are tall. I mean, and there are some really tall housewives like Bryn and of course, Uba. And like, there's some that definitely tower. Isn't Aaron really tall? Aaron's tall. Um, Kelly Ben Simone was quite oh. tall. Erica's tall, but she also wears big shoes all the time too. She's half shoe. Yeah, she's half shoe, but she also is naturally like she's over the five eight. I would assume. Got so it. So she can, is considered tall. And then um, Kyle's small, right? Kyle's like really petite, like you. Kyle, we we do measure offs all the time, and I <laughs> we're about the same height. So okay. I mean, I think that that's kind of how it is. But I, you know, everybody comes in, and I think also when we watch these shows, we assume that because everybody has big personalities, they're extroverts. But and? really what you kind of learn is like, no, I mean, I, I know for myself, particularly we were in mommy and me together, me and you back like, in the day, I'm naturally not an extrovert. You guys, I'm telling you when I met Teddy, so this was eight, 10, eight years ago ish. I don't even know. Ten, um, Cause it ten. was when Slate was a baby. No, no, it was later. I met you later than Mommy and Me. I met you through Megan when we were pregnant and stuff with Cruz and, and Oliver. Oh, it was oh, like a little okay. bit later. Okay. But we, but you were, I mean, you were always Teddy, but you were not the the big personality Teddy that we're seeing now. Like you were definitely much more kind of quiet and introverted and just did your own thing a little bit. You've really grown into, you know, and I, speaking and your I, mind. And I think that's always how I've been. And it's not necessarily that I've changed, but if I no. trust somebody and I'm in a conversation that I need to grow to that point, I will. But if I'm in a situation where I feel like I need to, I mean, we were even in a situation with our friend groups where like people would argue over what restaurant to go to for lunch. And I, I just don't do that. Yeah. Like yeah. I just don't have that natural, like fight in me for that. But if I'm heated about something or if I am paid to do a job, and I'm not saying anything is scripted, but I know my job at iHeart is to get information. You're I'm Teddy gonna, Walters. I, I wish, but I mean, I would go out of my way to be my largest self. And that's something I've really had to describe and explain to my husband even. Like, he's like, but then you come to my work events and you're a little bit quiet. He's like, you're friendly with everybody. I'm like, yeah, but then you'll find the three or four people that I connect with and I'm myself. Yeah. But I just yeah. can't, I don't like pushing myself on a conversation that doesn't feel authentic. It's interesting because I think, you know, I mean, we can talk about this like until the cows come home, of course, which we don't have cows, but you know what I mean? <laughs> until the kids come home. Um, you have quite possibly the most polarizing response in the housewife universe. <laughs> like I have never seen anything like this in terms of people are so triggered by you in positive and negative, like you see both sides, right? And why do you think, like, honestly, if you could go back and look back at your experience in this housewives world and seeing really some of the crazy things that some of the housewives have done, and they've done some crazy, awful things. Why is it that you feel like people really latch onto this kind of negative side for you? Well, I think it's a combination. I think I have a very deadpan voice in general, so that can be triggering to most. Well, it like, does come off sometimes a little maybe mean. It's so yeah, true. But You're it's, right. It, it's my voice in mm -hmm. general. Um, 
but also I think it really shifted so much between episode, I mean, season one and season two on Beverly Hills. I think once I had my situation with LVP and listen, I don't have anything bad to say about LVP at this point, that, that like ship has sailed. I don't care. I've moved on. But I think when we had our issue and it ultimately became, became, her demise on the show and all of the women turned on her and she left people had a really bad response to who i was in regards to her their favorite no longer being on a television show totally so there's nothing really there's nothing i could have changed about what i did or the issues that i had with lvb because i still stand by that she's good television but she produced herself and she tried to produce us and we got to the point where we had enough yeah. Do I think a lot of good housewives do the same? Yes. But a lot of them don't get called out the way that like, I think also a part of it from just my feeling is that people did get a little bit almost, they felt like you took Kyle from LVP in a little bit, like you jumped in there and became very close with Kyle, even though that wasn't the real story. But what they saw was like, oh, Teddy comes in, drives a wedge between LVP and Kyle, this friendship that I think fans had really enjoyed watching through the years. And they like, it almost felt like you were the other woman in a weird way. Right. And I think, you know, especially when you have your favorites and I, I I think, and I'm not even saying this in a shady way, but you can't take something that wasn't yours in the first place. I think Mm -hmm. that there are friendships that you develop on the show that yes, they are friendships. You have fun together. And you know, we all have those once we've been on the show, but once filming stops, how much is your life intertwined? And I think that's where it really shifted. There was a couple of us where filming stopped and nothing changed and our relationships continued to build. And then once you feel that, when you get back to filming and all of a sudden you're not in control because you haven't done the work to maintain a friendship the way all friendships take, like every adult friendship that I have, other than my friendships from high school, where it's like, you you know, six months can pass, you see each other and not like a day has passed. But as an adult, like you maintain your friendships, if you care about one another, once you have kids, a husband, all of those things, when you realize that maybe somebody might just be doing it for the show, there is going to be a divide. Yeah, it's interesting. I feel like the dynamic between the housewives, like you can see in the different shows, which ones you really feel are tight in real life and which ones don't like, can you say off the top of your head, which cast do you think is really t- like, really disconnected between seasons? Do you see any of that or no? Um, I feel like Dubai is really disconnected in between seasons. Like they I don't even can... really associate at all with each other. I think you can feel it. Um, I think that like there's obviously cast divided when it comes to Salt Lake. You could completely- Yeah, we heard, I heard Whitney and Angie on your show. Yeah, but then also I had Monica hiding in the back room because she can't be with any one of them. And that also made me feel bad. Um, I mean, <laughs> Wait, I- Monica was hiding in the bathroom while Whitney and Angie oh, were on your show? Not, not bathroom, back room. Sorry, oh, back I, don't want, I don't want to- <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to be putting that rumor out there. But no, there was like a bedroom and then there's the suite. So she, she was like- still like, has such drama with those two. Oh, with everyone. I mean, I she was pretty much alone the entire time. I oh, mean, really? and then we've got Jersey, who 90% of the cast isn't even allowed to do press right now. That's so, crazy. I mean, I think that's how you how you feel it. And that's why I've always hated the like word alliance. Mm. Cause I don't think in real life or in real friendships you have alliances. You actually have people that you like, you enjoy, they're your friends. And yeah, of course. It's just like, connection. It's connection it's con- and relatability. Like some some people just can relate more. And then there's always gonna be people that you just don't get. You're they're not your people. And so I guess Alliance feels more like a game show, like a survivor or big brother. Right. Which I think it's it's more just this is who I'm closest with. Am I gonna respect this friend's boundaries? Most likely. Am I going to probably have this one's back? to my detriment yes but i would also do that in real life like right now if you came for me about latal or val i would i would do the same thing that i would do for kyle or erica or tamara you know like it's just how it goes 
So she's re referencing two girls that we both know that we're bo both close with. So there's no drama. But she's saying what you're saying is basically that you are a good friend. And it's like, regardless of on the show or not, people really like to um, get on top of you about defending blindly some people, you know, like um, on, on the Beverly Hills cast. I mean, let's be honest on the on your podcast and in interviews, etc. Like what what was that like, by the way, when you went on Watch What Happens Live? Because you were you were asked to go on Watch What Happens Live last week. And it was obviously kind of a little bit like as a as a I don't want to say like a teammate or whatever. But what would you say like as a support as a support? Well, Kyle's had a tough seasons, obviously. So how I was think, that for you? I think a lot of people saw it as like, wow, the, they you know, Kyle just brought her in. She's shoving us down our throat, you know, whatever. That's what they like to continue to imply. Yeah. What I don't think people realize is there's always like a backstory to everything. So I was already booked to go to New York, had booked the cancer event with Andy. Everybody knew night. that for months in advance. Like that's something both Andy and I signed on to do months ago. So once they released the premiere date with Kyle, they were like, okay, this all makes sense. Let's bring Teddy in. She flies in one day early and we've got this. Plus it makes sense. But I think people always think there's so much more behind it when really it's like, uh, clearly this is an easy transition for all of us. This works out. It makes sense. If you watch the after show, you see me and Andy do an entire thing about the cancer awareness. There's always another reason behind it. And because, you know, no matter what, no matter how, much of a favorite housewife someone may be. I'm not saying I'm one, but I'm saying Kyle can be one. Um, they're not going to go out of their way to give you that comfort zone. Yeah, they don't want it. Like they're not trying to make it cushy. It's a housewives, and it's yeah. and it's watch what happens live. They really try to put you like on your toes. But for you, you know, people are forgetting. Like I think when they see you and Kyle, they immediately assume that you're just like her her bodyguard or something security, but you, you are the host and you guys, we have to remember this. she's the host of one of the number one housewives podcasts. So it's like seeing watch what crappens guys on or Danny Pellegrino or any of those people on watch what happens live. It, it aligns. It does make sense. So for Teddy being, yeah, I mean, I get it. It, it did kind of work out so that it felt like you were there kind of to, to, to protect her, but yeah, there were reasons behind. And I agree. I don't think watch what happens live is trying to like tiptoe around anyone no and they asked her all the hard questions they asked me hard questions i ended up sharing more than i ever would have probably wanted to share about my own personal life mm -hmm. and i think that's just the nature of the business and you kind of go in with everything it, it's the same way that people are like did you sneak in to watch what happens live on <laughs> at BravoCon. Oh, we we're going to get into that. We, we saw have you had to. an armband. I was like, for the actual love, do you think? <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> do you think I was like Jin Shaw breaking it down? <laughs> like, no, they show your photos. They do squash the beef. I had a rundown of the information of when I'm supposed to be there. Like, it, nothing is a surprise. Nothing is a surprise. And so let's go back really fast to the Watch What Happens Live, not at BravoCon, but with Kyle that last week. You did open up about something that happened season one with you and Edwin, who, by the way, I saw him with you in Vegas. He was so sweet. He's like, Donna, I'm so proud of everything you're doing. How's Lance? Like, he was so kind, so yeah. nice. Um, and you did, he was in the audience when you were saying yeah. this. So clearly he's okay with you talking about this openly, but you did mention that there was like a little bit of a, you went through a little bit of a bumpy time. You also talked about it on your show with Edwin. So, right. you know, is that something that like you feel comfortable talking about? Does he feel, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, he's always been comfortable with me talking about it, to be honest. Like even when my first season on Housewives, he wanted me to talk about it. Cause he said, I don't feel like you can a hundred percent be who you are. Um, without sharing what our struggles were last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I refused. I'm going to like get emotional for a second, but no. like I refused because I really wanted to protect our family and our life and what we were. And I just wasn't there yet. Yeah. Um, I finally got into the place in my life where I know there is a lot of people that struggle in the same situation and have extreme highs and lows in their marriages. For us, for example, you know, we first met, I rode horses for a living. I traveled all the time. I was successful. I was, 
you know, I had my own life outside of him. I never needed anything from him. And then when I wanted to start trying to have kids, everything shifted. I was having multiple miscarriages. I had IVF. I had postpartum depression and anxiety, and I was struggling with body image issues. Like there was so many things. And I'm not saying these were solely my issues, but the more I was needy or leaned on him, the more he pulled away and did things that ultimately hurt me. Mm. Mm. And then I started shutting off and it just, we really probably had about a year and a half where I didn't think we were going to make it. Yeah. And it was during that year and a half and it was right after Cruz was born. That's why I started all in. Cause I was like, I need to change my life and it's not going to have anything to do with this man that I'm married to. And that's the father of my kids. Like I have to, because yeah. I can't look for him to validate my day every day when he gets home from work. So because was all in for you more like a career? You just needed something to focus on or was it also really about losing weight and looking good and feeling good? It was about feeling good. It was the, first, you have to remember if you go back in time to whatever it was, Cruz is, you know, 10 years old, you know, so nine, nine years ago, or Cruz is nine years old. So nine years ago, I did that for one year straight without ever making $1. I you blocked. were just doing like accountability with friends at the beginning. No, I remember no, I was not on your even, not even, a, not even accountability with friends. It was, we tried out all the different workout classes, class pass. Class pass. I went, I blogged every single day about my workouts, my food, all that kind of stuff. And what I wasn't a hundred percent, I had opened up to some of the girls in our group, but not everybody. Cause that's not necessarily who I am, but in our group, I mean like our mommy and me friends. Um, I was just struggling and I was feeling really alone and I was feeling really lost. And I felt like I had lost a big part of myself and all in was really about finding myself and getting my mental health in check. So then I could start to decide if I was willing to work on my marriage. Mm. Well, sometimes that happens with dynamics, you know, with either the husband starts to all of a sudden make a ton of money and then things change or, or the woman goes from working to not working or vice versa you know, yeah. all of a sudden becomes very successful or famous and makes a lot of money and dynamic shift. And so your husband, Edwin, met you as this like doer and this goer and this, you know, hustler basically. And then all of a sudden you were, you know, feeling down on yourself. You were going through some tough times. You were struggling. On bed with, rest, all the things. You happen to be gaining weight and you were like having babies and that doesn't make anyone feel good when you're not feeling good in your body. And when I met you, I mean, yeah, we were months out of having babies and we were working out like crazy people going to berries three times yeah. a day. Like it's like, we were, was like at the beginning, it was definitely, it was, that was just over the top. more <laughs> like needing to figure out a way to give myself a, a purpose outside of my kids, which yeah. I needed both. I needed both. Yeah. But you really genuinely like went through some tough times. I mean, and I wasn't even that close with you, but I felt it and I knew it. Right. So I remember, you know, spending a new year's with you and like you you woke up the next day and you were like i'm having anxiety like and you're yeah. still someone that struggles with anxiety we talk about this all the time you know openly but i just think it's really you're very self-aware that's something that i feel like a lot of people aren't in that housewives universe like you admit it straight up this is who i am this is what you know like you even said it, let's get into that Bravo con watch what happens live. Yeah. You know, you come in there and I want to hear kind of how this all works. But at one point, Andy does say, Vicky thinks you're annoying. And you look at the audience and you say, who doesn't? Like, yeah, you, you know, you're not like blind to what is out there. No. And I think people, people so much want to assume that I'm there to make a moment. Mm. And I think because I do have like, a verbose part of my voice, but that's really just how I communicate in general. I, I don't, I don't think you really ever hear me scream. Like this is who I am. Happy, yeah. sad, mad. This is how I sound. Yeah. But I, I really don't take myself too seriously. Like I people, the amount of people that even sent me messages about what Jeff Lewis said and said, you should sue him screw this. Like, I can't believe you'd say that about your business. Like that's defamation. And I honestly laughed. Yeah. I love that by the way. Like, I think, yeah, I, I saw don't, that. 
I get it. I like Jeff Lewis. He's in for the joke. There's been rumors and speculations about my business. If there was any absolute truth to any of it, yeah, maybe I'd sue him, but I don't take myself that seriously. I love what I do. I know I've helped a lot of people, but at the end of the day, I'm working with BravoCon. I know that's part of the territory and it is what it is. So like when Jeff Lewis goes on that opening panel and asks Andy all those questions and, and really kind of dug at, you know, I mean, a little bit dug at Kyle, Dorit, you, Crystal, uh, Monica, like all these different housewives. Yeah. I personally see this as like so in alignment of BravoCon and like what this vibe is. This is not a situation where we have to worry about like feelings getting hurt. Like, let's be polite and kind. That's not, we're not watching Oprah. We're watching Bravo. <laughs> And I, right? I think there's a difference. I think there's a difference between somebody going on a panel like a Jeff Lewis. And granted, can he take it too far sometimes? Probably. Every day. Did he hurt somebody? But that's who he is. And if you like Jeff Lewis, you're going to listen for those reasons. Um, that being said, where I think it gets a little pushed is I don't think people that pay to go to BravoCon should be booing anybody. And I don't mm -hmm. know, I don't, I didn't hear it. I don't know that I, if I got booed or didn't get booed, but I mean, for all of the people that did get booed this year, I think that's really where I don't love it. Like people talk all the shit you want to talk, throw shade, make your digs, but like every single person that is on that network or working within that network in some capacity, whether you're a blogger, a podcaster, a in press hosting an event, like you're there doing a service for the company and there's a reason why you're doing it. So to get booed, like even the Tom Sandoval thing, like him getting booed like crazy going on stage. But then I was there when he walked outside and I saw the people wanting to get into BravoCon and the way they lost it with excitement to see him. And it's like, let's put it on perspective. Like, why do we need to boo someone? So I was saying the exact same thing on my show yesterday. And I talked about this also, I feel like there's a mob mentality when you go into some, a room like that, right? Where everyone feels like number one, there's, a, you know, I wasn't drinking at Bravo, like at the actual event, but they serve alcohol. So you never know how much people are drinking. People are getting kind of hyped up in this idea. And like with the Teresa and the Louie and the Jen Aiden moment, which wasn't a great moment, obviously, no. with them getting up and whatever. But also, like, a fan is coming up, a fan, I mean, is coming up to the microphone and basically talking shit to them. It's it's a very uncomfortable position. You're getting publicly booed, publicly yelled at, publicly shamed, and it's not by your cast members and your, and your like, equals. It's by your fans, and it's a very uncomfortable position. It feels very Jerry Springer-like in those moments, right? And, so and I, I agree. I think, I mean, I even think the shady question, you know, like if there was one where somebody, go, you know, comes up and says to Kyle, like, why are you trying to make, like, he obviously read it on Twitter. It's been said a thousand oh, times. Oh, I saw like, this about you. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you trying to make fetch happen? And, you know, all of these things. And it's like, to me, honestly, like there are things that will hurt me. Like if you say something about my kids. I will freaking go to the ends of the world to Good. freaking come for you. But to say that somebody's trying to make me happen doesn't hurt my feelings or not hurt my feelings. At the end of the day, I'm bringing home a big paycheck and I'm doing my job and I know I'm doing it well and I have to think of the bigger picture. Of course. But what I don't like is that my friends have to then stand up and then get heat for it. Like Kyle's like, in all due respect, sir, I'm not trying to make her happen for you. She very much happens for me in my life. Yeah. And that's what's important. Like she is a friend to me. And those are the things that you're like, everyone's got to get that. All of us have friends. All of us have people we care about. I don't need all of my friends to love all of my friends. I don't. No. But I have no. to appreciate who they are in each person's life. Yeah, somehow people really love to get on you about like, why is she still there? Why is she so relevant? Because you're freaking amazing at your podcast. I'm sorry, your podcast is so good. Thank I you. always feel like you really don't give two fucks about asking the questions. You I will don't. ask the questions that a lot of people are scared to, I guess, because you're kind of, you're like, what's, what, why not? I don't right? have any skin in the game anymore. Exactly. And that's, and that's why people that say, oh, you're biased towards, Sutton, like you're giving her a hard time. I'm like, no, I legitimately just don't trust this person. I have met her in person and I have now watched her on the show. And with all due to all the people that solely watch the show, if you haven't met the person and you don't know them firsthand, 
you don't get to 100% say you can get that feeling from some people. I will not say that again about Garcelle. I think, listen, I think Garcelle's a good person. I think she puts on a good TV show. Are there parts of her and things she said about me that have bugged? Yes. But I truly feel differently about the way that Sutton is. And I think at the end of the day, people will see it. I felt it from the second I met her. Mm -hmm. and things that weren't shown my very first time filming with her. And anybody can go back and even ask Erica some of the things that she said to us at our very first breakfast in New York when I realized this is not a good person. Mm -hmm. And I, it's very hard to change my opinion once you show me who you are. Wow. Do you think that like, uh, you know, Kyle has had this kind of in and out relationship with Sutton and that's obviously a little bit weird for you considering that you're very close with Kyle or do you just not care? You're oh, like, you got to do what you got to do. No, I, we, we talked about this on, on the twats the other day when I had her on, I said, listen, I've I, from day one, I've said, I don't trust her, but you do what you want to do. And she's, I mean, since then, like I was invited to go with them to stagecoach. We've had all these things, but I choose because I've for, you know, I'm not filming, I'm not being paid to do, I don't need to put myself in that situation with her at this point in time, because it's not someone I enjoy being around. So like speaking of someone that you don't enjoy being around, you're also, you know, you have a mutual <laughs> with uh, Tamara, Miss Vicki Gumbelson, who uh, this like broke the internet last night. This broke the Bravo internet, basically, was this idea that this Bravo con watch what happens live moment, right? Where you came right. out there to squash the beef. And like you said, you were not trying to make a moment, but you were being, you know, hired essentially, right? I mean, yeah. you were being asked to be part of the show. You knew about this in advance that you had to go to do this taping, obviously. It was in your schedule. Right. Correct. So I, I think where things got a little askew and yes, are there moments that I look back at that, at what I said or what I did and go, oh my gosh, for anybody who is also struggling with cancer, that was upset in this moment that I said this comment, I apologize. Do I apologize to Vicky? No, because I went in there, truthfully, she had just won, you know, the the night before housewife of the whatever the century like <laughs> whatever it may be and in that moment instead of celebrating that moment she went on the red carpet with Tamara and trash talked me mm. then we can even go back to the beginning of you know whatever it was two years ago where she called my boss at iHeart, asked to have me replace, take over my job, talked bad about me to Bryce Sander on Entertainment Tonight, then went on Watch What Happens Live to continue the narrative of how terrible I was to her. When let's also be mindful, at this point, I had met her two times and was over the top, nice, kind her. We had also been to BravoCon together where I could tell she was uncomfortable and I went out of my way to try to make her feel more comfortable because I knew she was no longer part of the show either. Mm. So I, I had really, you know, and then at some point, yes, I did tweet over, you know, a year and a half ago, the January 6th comment. Was that great? Probably not. Was I being what an asshole? What triggered that? Like what made you want to say that? Just because, I mean, at the you end of the day, she, at the end of the day, she's a Trumper and I just freaking went for it, <laughs> you know, like, uh, but, but she was in Puerto Vallarta, <laughs> but I clearly never thought I assumed of course, of course, the same way. I don't think Jeff Lewis believes I have killed anyone. <laughs> I assume she would know that was a joke and yeah. I wasn't actually insinuating she was there and she probably, if she was there, she wouldn't probably wouldn't even have the wherewithal to know if <laughs> how to fight back against it regardless. But here's, here's the long and short of it. Going on to watch what happens live. I was told, do not bring up January 6th. You're coming on to like, just move on. I'm like, got it. I walk in. She looks at me, says I'm disgusting. Something along those lines. Well, she brought up January 6th. And then she brought up January yeah. 6th. So now then I try to make light of it. I make fun of myself. Who doesn't find me annoying? You know, I didn't see the tapes January 6th. Like I'm trying to make light. And then she's like, you're just a pathetic human being. And that's when I said, you know, uh, I originally thought you were just jealous of my friendship and success with Tamara, but ultimately maybe you're just triggered by somebody with cancer for people that don't know this backstory. They think I'm just weaponizing the fact that I have cancer. No, I am relating it back to 
now in hindsight, watching her behavior with her ex-boyfriend who she made a storyline about his cancer when he never had it, it's upsetting to me and shows the kind of person she is. Mm. I would have effortlessly squashed the beef with her if I would have walked out and she would have treated me like I was a human being. So what if she did? What if she did? What if you came out and she was like, okay, what, Teddy? What? What, Like, how would you have handled it differently? I would have been like, I am so sorry we're in this situation back and forth and that for whatever reason you have an issue with your friends coexisting and I get it and you and Tamara have a friendship outside of me and I would never try to stop it. Like, hell, I wanted to go to Trace Amigas and support you guys and you wouldn't let me be there Mm. because you told people that you didn't want me to take any attention off of you which is fine, but I would have been promoting my friend Tamara the way she should have been about the podcast. Instead, she talked shit about it, talked shit about me and went out of her way to put down her friend. So that's, for me, it's more just, what do I see in this human? Do I regret saying those words? Probably. But do I regret it? Because I think that I was in a lose-lose with her regardless. She, yeah. The second she saw me, she, she was, was not going to be nice. She was, she was already, she's already decided she doesn't want to make up with you. Cause you guys could have made up so long ago, but I feel like she's already like, she's in there and she's done. She, and, she's not willing to change. And plus I've been recapping, you know, I had to recap season one of Orange County and I had nothing but positive things to say about her season one of Orange County. Like I didn't go digging into her. I thought she was excellent. Like I can I can see both sides of yeah. of her. But yeah, I mean, there are certain things where I'm like, listen, you want to hustle and get back on that show, then maybe this season on Orange County, you shouldn't have said you refused to be a part of the drama, but yet you never want to be out of it because you don't see yourself for who you are, which is what my issue is. It's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit like... um the, the idea of like, I don't want to, I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be part of this, but you're inserting yourself into all of the parts of it. Like you, she did on the red carpet. Yeah. Right? It, she could have just said, it's all good. Let bygones be bygones. Like we're good. We're good. Right. Yeah, but we weren't there. We'd already, like, I tried to be there multiple times and she refused to let it happen. And so it was like, if, and I want to ask you a question as being somebody who reports on these things, if she would have come up and said to me, why'd you say January 6th and why do this? And you're pathetic or you're disgusting or you're trying to be relevant. And I would have gone, I'm really sorry, Vicky. I just want to be friends. How do you think people would have handled it there with me? I think people would have been like, oh my God, what a pushover Teddy is. What yeah. a loser she is. She has no personality. She's such a, she's such a people pleaser. She's, she's just so a boring. wannabe. She's like, there's no win. There's no win. So I had to go with what felt right to me in that moment, which is she's not giving in, so I'm not giving in. I'm done. Yeah, like it, it's so interesting because if you would have been the nice, like above it person, people would have talked bad about you. And then because you said this, people talk bad about you. That's what I'm saying. It's so interesting. And I'm really trying to show, at least for my audience, you know, because I, I told my Facebook group yesterday, I was like, I'm interviewing Teddy Mellencamp and I want you guys to see like, Teddy is not a bad person. You're not a bad person. And I know this. So what's like the one thing that you wish people knew about you that they don't get to see because of the show or maybe because of the podcast, because you're just trying to kind of get the answers and you're like a little bit more Um, intense or aggressive because you're snarky on the show, you know? So what would you say people like don't know about you? I would say the the biggest thing um, for me is, is truthfully, as much as my, I I sound intense, I really laugh at myself all the freaking time. I think that I make, I mean, we're called the twats. (laughs) <laughs> like, how serious do you really, when I, we say bar, the, the Teddy Walters, I don't really think I'm this like amazing journalist. I think that I just want to have fun with it and give each person a show for what they're listening for. And I watch it the way that anybody would want to watch it. And I think the true testament is even if I do say things that maybe aren't the best, or I put my foot in my mouth, or I ask a question that might be inappropriate. Anytime I have had a guest on two teas in a pod, they other, other than Vicky, <laughs> they all come back. We all have each other's numbers. And at the end of the day, me and Tamara can be shit shows sometimes, but think about all the women that came to support us on that Thursday night. Not one of them was paid to be there. And we had, you know, we, now we're over like 1.5 million downloads from just BravoCon. Yeah. So it's like, at that point, it's like you had to realize these are real relationships that are being built with real people. 
that have a general respect for each other. And I do really respect the housewives and understand the work that it takes to go into it. And I do appreciate them, good or bad. That's why you're only as good as last week's episode. Yeah, and you guys, just so you know, like outside of the show and outside of the housewives world, like I see Teddy as a mom, a really, really good and active and present mom. She's always there for her kids. She's always the one that's like, you know, will choose if she can to be there for them for all their like things. And you go to the games and all of that. You've also been a great friend. We've seen it on the show, of course, but like we've seen it in real life, right? You've always been there. I remember back in the day, you would, you would text me some, like if I needed something, you would always be the one you hired me for all in to help like and coach and stuff. So not to be an all in coach, but for, it was a social media thing. It was the social media together. thing. Like you are someone that will, um, you know, help. I am a your, girl's girl. As much as, girl. as much as I can be a shit talker, I really want everyone to succeed. And here's the thing. You could go on tomorrow and talk shit about me on your next show and say, I didn't agree with Teddy said here and do whatever. And if you came to me a week from now and said, Hey, I said these things, blah, blah, blah. But like, will you come on and let's talk about it? I will say yes. Yeah. Like I want everybody to do well. well and I, I want- really, I will, I will have to say you had a crazy ass week and you had a million downloads over the weekend, which is beyond you've done so much. You've not slept and, (laughs) um, and you still agreed to do the show with me today. So I know that that's a big thing for me and for daily dose. And I appreciate you, Teddy. I really do. I think you're killing it. You look insanely amazing. And I know that you're going through your cancer journey and you're going through all of that, which is it can't be easy. I mean, I talk to Valerie about you all the time about it because oh, I, I worry about you. Like, it's so intense. So um, I hope that's going okay. Thank you. Oh, I have a question for you because I haven't had a chance to listen yet. Like, yeah. Uh, th- also, you could tell when things get serious in regards to my, like, personal health. I'm like, all right, let's move right along. I have to ask <laughs> you, did you listen to the Bethany and Denise um, podcast yet? I, I, cu- I couldn't. I didn't have the bandwidth. But is there I any- just listened. To, I just watched the reel about it, but I haven't listened. And did you hear what Kelly Ben Simone said, how Kelly said that Bethany asked her to be on her show? No. Yep. She said it in her panel. So, I mean, really, who's ne- you're going to get asked next. Never. She'll never ask me. No. Well, you never know. <laughs> um, she may but, ask my dog. But I love that it's like part one. I'm like, what is part two going to be? What are you I don't know. The speak? preview was her talking about Charlie Sheen. Like, is this just about her life or is it about the Bravo of it all? I don't know. I mean, because I, what's they your were relationship all in with that Denise? same picture. Like, oh, remember yeah, like two right. weeks ago where Raquel was in the picture, Denise, there was some girls from Dancing Jen- with the Stars. Jenny Garth. I know. I need to ask Jenny because I'm friends with Jenny. So... And, and Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Like, there was the most random group of people ever. But do you think, are you and Denise, like, at all on speaking terms? Oh, no. I'm like, like, the other day I went to, because I was posting, like, old videos from BravoCon, and I went to tag her, and I couldn't. So I, like, asked my social media guy, I'm like, why can't I tag Denise? He's like, you're blocked. <laughs> so oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God. Like, Who I wasn't else even going to say anything shit. I was just trying to like show a video and give everybody credit where credit's due. It was just our walking on stage. And I was like, oh, so I have no idea what she's up to. Who else has blocked you in this world? Vicky. Oh yeah. I don't know if I'm blocked. I have to check. I don't know if I'm blocked or she's just doesn't follow me. Let me see if I can pull her up. This is how, this is how much I care. <laughs> 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 I did. Tamara did ask me to check today if Heather Gay follows me and she doesn't. So that's Wait, all. Why? I, you have drama with Heather Gay now? No, no. But we just last year during the Jen Shaw stuff, I think mm. we just recapped her and it pissed her off. Um, yeah. Like Jen broke into your room and like took your makeup artist or something. Wasn't there like. Yeah, I came with a jeweler and a therapist and all this stuff. <laughs> um, I must be blocked on Vicki Gumbelson because she does not pull up when I type in her name other than like tagged photos. So, oh, I, I my think, God. I think, uh, I mean, I think it's just Vicky and Denise. I mean, I, I don't even think LVP blocked me. So I, I you know. Well, you, you have skin that is thicker than legit 
anyone I know because to go through, I'm such a small, tiny, little nothing on the internet and the hate that Stop I get. It. You're a, doing great. Okay, but sometimes it takes me down and I'm like a little nothing. So I can only imagine the bigger you are. But Jeff Lewis was on a show this morning and he was talking, he had he had uh, Ronnie and Ben from Watch What Crappens on his show and he was talking about, you know, all the trouble that he's getting in and everything that he's saying wrong. And he, he, he recognizes it. He recognizes yeah. it. But he was saying that, you know, the truth is, you will get hate the bigger you are. And the more that, like, it, it's, no one's going to want to follow vanilla. People don't want to follow yeah. boring. You are not boring, Teddy. And I don't know who says you're, I guess your voice is monotone, but your personality is not boring at all. We have to work <laughs> on your voice. Let's work on it. Uh, you know what? It, it may be, <laughs> let's make an excuse right now. I'm not going to be accountable here. But when I first moved to LA, my first boss told me I couldn't have my Southern accent anymore because <gasps> I'd answer his phone. I'm not going to out him, but like, I'd be like, by the office, hold on, let me see if I can get him. Yeah. And he was like, you can't talk like that. Like no one understands. It. Hold on, Will Smith. Let me get him real quick. <laughs> hold on. I'll be right back with you. And like, I think because I worked so hard to get rid of my accent. Now I'm just, you're just flat. But the second I get drunk, it's back. It's okay, back. So I, yes. Okay, so we just always need to be around Teddy. One. But you notice that, like, when you were with Shep on your show, it was so fun listening to the two of you guys, by the way. That was such a fun episode. I don't know. You were just laughing. You were just so much – you were so alive. I, if you guys have to go listen to her and Shep who grew up together. Oh, my gosh. Did my accent come out there? Because I was pretty drunk. Not as drunk as him who kept burping into the mic. I was like, Shep, you've burped three times into the mic. At least, like, pull it away. Did you hear that he was, like, a hot mess express this weekend? I mean, he always is. But, like, what... What did he do? Oh, no. Like, as supposedly just, like, yelling at fans and, like, at bars, like, late at night or alone at poker tables. Like, just not good. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you gotta I, get, you gotta get Ted, uh, Shep into All In, but, like, just the drinking one. Well, I already had to give him a hard enough time about his shirt. I'm like, Shep, what the hell is this shirt with, like, an alcohol bottle and ice cubes and <laughs> Yeah, pouring out. And you don't, your pants aren't zipped up. But, like, here's the thing. We can say what we want to say about Shep. I, sh I did not think, Shep was my last interview at BravoCon. It was the end of the freaking day. There, In my mind, we hadn't heard from Shep in hours. I was like, there's no way he's coming. And I get a call and he's like, Tedro, I'm leaving, I'm on my way. You know, so like the fact, <laughs> like the fact that he still showed up Aww. at least shows the kind of person that he is. And like, he gets caught up in shit. And you know what, I give him a hard time about, you know, some of his cheating and things, his antics, but he's able to take it. If no, he sounds like good people, and you guys had fun together. I love that. Like, if you ever need someone to fill in for Tamara, I swear you should ask Shep to do some shows with you because it was a good dynamic. I mean, he'll just have to pay attention to an actual t the The amount of editing we had to do at that show to oh. cut out things <laughs> Shep said. <laughs> Well, you and you and Emily are adorable <laughs> together, too. It's always very cute in Cynthia. So, Teddy, love you. Thank you so much for being here. And you're releasing new episodes every five seconds this week, right? Yes, we should probably have one releasing in, like, the next two hours where we recap. Because um, me and Tamara hadn't really seen each other in a whole 24 hours. So we had How did you to, handle it? <laughs> we had we had to get it had together withdrawal. and recap. Um, so, yeah, we'll be recapping all the things. And then you guys... Uh, Thank you so much, Don. I appreciate having me on and all that. Oh, well, I'm glad to talk to you and, and I'll talk to you soon for sure. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. <gasps> Thank you, Ted.